Hi everyone, and welcome back. Over the past six weeks, we've talked a lot about approximation, specifically in the context of Taylor polynomials and Taylor series. We've seen that these objects can help us to estimate the values of our function at certain points, and can help us to compute integrals. Well, I have one final application for you today. We're going to use Taylor series to evaluate limits. This corresponds to page 151 of the course notes, so please make sure you've taken a look. To give you an idea of how exactly we're going to use Taylor series to compute limits, consider this example that's featured in the course notes. The limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x. Okay, now we all know that this limit is 1, right? This is a famous limit that you probably saw back in Math 117. It turns out that you can show the limit is 1 using Taylor series. So what I'm going to do is write out the Maclaurin series for sine x. Really, we only need the first term, which is x, and we need to know that the remaining terms are of order x cubed as x goes to 0. You see, this is enough to cancel this x on the bottom. I can divide both terms by x, and that leaves me with 1 plus big O of x squared. If I divide big O of x cubed by x, the exponent is going to go down by 1. The question is, what happens to big O of x squared as x goes to 0? Well, remember, big O of x squared could represent any function that's bounded above an absolute value by a constant times the absolute value of x squared. Well, as x goes to 0, that constant times the absolute value of x squared, that's also going to go to 0. So whatever this mysterious function is, we know it must be going to 0 as x goes to 0. Oh, well, look at this. I have a limit that I can actually evaluate. My final answer is 1 plus 0, which sure enough is 1. Pretty cool, huh? Now I know this was kind of a baby example, but I think it does a good job of illustrating how we're going to approach these types of problems. We're going to write out the Maclaurin series for the functions in our limit, making appropriate use of big O notation. Hopefully then we'll get some cancellation and we'll end up with a limit we can actually evaluate. Let me show you a couple more examples. Suppose we wish to find the limit as x goes to 0 of this nasty expression, x squared e to the x plus 2 cos x minus 2, all divided by x cubed. Now note that you can't just plug in 0 to this thing. This is an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. You can try L'Hopital's rule, but you're going to have to perform it three times before you get an answer. Each time will require one or more uses of the product rule. Ugh! Instead, let's see if we can solve this problem using Taylor series. So I notice that I have a couple familiar functions in this limit, e to the x and cos x. I'm going to try to cancel this x cubed term on the bottom by writing out the Maclaurin series for these two functions. Okay, so I have the limit as x goes to 0, and in the numerator I have x squared. Now I'd like to write out the Maclaurin series for e to the x. How many terms should I write down? Well, I'm trying to cancel this x cubed on the bottom, right? So since I'm going to be multiplying by x squared, I should probably at least include up to the x term, right? That would give me an x cubed in the numerator. So I have 1 plus x, and my remaining terms are going to be of order x squared as x goes to 0. So I'll just write big O of x squared. Now I do the same for cos x. I have 2 times the Maclaurin series for cos. That's 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial, and I think this will probably be good enough. We can always change things later if needed. My remaining terms are going to be of order x to the 4 as x goes to 0, so I'll add big O of x to the 4. Finally, I have minus 2, and all of this is divided by x cubed. Let's now expand out the numerator, and hopefully we'll get some cancellation. From my e to the x term, I get x squared, plus x cubed, and when I multiply x squared by big O of x squared, that's going to give me big O of x to the 4. From my cosine term, I get 2 minus x squared, and again, big O of x to the 4. I have my second minus 2, and I divide by x cubed. Okay, it looks like I'm going to get some simplification here. This is probably a good sign. I have an x squared term that will cancel with this x squared. I have a plus 2 that will cancel with this minus 2. And I can combine these two big O of x to the 4s into a single big O term. I'm left with the limit as x goes to 0 of x cubed plus big O of x to the 4, all divided by x cubed. 
Well, just like in the example from the last slide, we're now ready to cancel that x cubed term. I have the limit as x goes to zero of one plus big O of x. As x goes to zero, big O of x is gonna go to zero as well. This gives me a final answer of one plus zero, which is one. Pretty nice, huh? This technique often works well when you have a single power of x in the denominator. Things will cancel out quite nicely. As we'll see in the next example, however, it can also work in other situations. For our last example, I'd like to use Taylor series to compute this limit. The limit as x goes to zero of one minus e to the x squared divided by x sine two x. Just like the limits in our previous examples, we could use L'Hopital's rule here, but we would have to use it twice and it would require multiple applications of both the product and chain rules. Not too much fun. Instead, we'll try Taylor series. So I'm gonna start by finding the Maclaurin series for e to the x squared and sine 2x. Hopefully, when I plug these into my limit, some cancellation will occur. I have the limit as x goes to zero, and in the numerator, I have one minus, okay, I need the Maclaurin series for e to the x squared. Well, this should be the same as the Maclaurin series for e to the x, except I'm gonna replace all my x's with x squareds. So I have one plus x squared, and after this point, the terms are of order x to the four as x goes to zero. So I'm just gonna write big O of x to the four. Hopefully this will be enough terms. In the denominator, I have x times the Maclaurin series for sine 2x. This will look like the Maclaurin series for sine x, except we're gonna replace x with 2x. Now I'm not exactly sure how many terms I'm gonna need, so I'm just gonna be really lazy and take only the first term. The first term is gonna be 2x, and then after this point, all the terms are of order x cubed as x goes to zero. So I'm gonna write big O of x cubed. You usually don't need to write too many terms, so hopefully this will be enough. Okay, how can I simplify this limit? Well, in the numerator, the ones are gonna cancel out. I have the limit as x goes to zero of minus x squared plus big O of x to the four. In the denominator, I have two x squared plus big O of x to the four as well, right? X times big O of x cubed is big O of x to the four. Ah, okay, now check it out. I really will get some cancellation. In my numerator, I have an x squared term plus something of order x to the four. So I could actually factor an x squared from this numerator. I would get the limit as x goes to zero of x squared times minus one and when I take x squared out of big O of x to the four, I'm left with big O of x squared. This was one of the properties of big O that we saw at the end of the first lesson. Well, why stop there? I can do exactly the same thing in the denominator. I'll factor out x squared, leaving me with two plus big O of x squared. Now my x squareds cancel. I have the limit as x goes to zero of minus one plus big O of x squared, divided by two plus big O of x squared. When x goes to zero, those big O terms go to zero as well. I have a final answer of minus one half.